Hello, this is Mike Fauché, and in today's video, I want to cover the Adalov WA635X Outdoor Wi-Fi 6 Access Point. This is a really rugged, heavy-duty, long-range access point that's designed for harsh outdoor environments. If you want to find out more about this device and how it performs, then watch the rest of this video. And please don't forget to like and subscribe, as it really does help support the channel. Full disclosure, Adeloff did send me the device for review with no strings attached. They haven't paid for this review, nor have they seen it or influenced it in any way. As always, all the results and opinions are my own. When Adeloff reached out to me and offered to send me this device, it caught my attention as it was obviously targeted for outdoor use, which I've recently been interested in. Let's quickly go over the specs and then we'll see what comes in the box and then see how to set this thing up and test the performance. The WA635X is a Wi-Fi 6 access point with a combined throughput of 5,378 megabits per second. 4,804 megabits per second are dedicated to the 5 gigahertz band and 574 megabits are for the 2.4 gigahertz band. It supports simultaneous connections of up to 500 wireless devices and it supports the 803.3 ATPOE standard as well as the 48 volt half amp passive PoE. It has native support for mesh Wi-Fi and works seamlessly with the Omada mesh if you're using an Omada controller. It supports band steering, load balancing, multiple SSIDs, VLANs. We'll get more into this as we get through the setup. In the box you get the device itself and as you can see it's a pretty large and extremely rugged device. In terms of included accessories, you get the mounting straps for the pole mount, weather sealed fittings for your ethernet or your fiber or power cables if you're using external power. You get a PoE injector and power cord which is a nice touch, ethernet cable, SFP adapter for attaching a fiber connection for those longer distances, mounting hardware, four heavy duty high gain antennas, and you get the three part mounting bracket which is used for either wall mounting or pole mount. Looking at the mounting bracket, again you see an extremely heavy duty and versatile mount. It can be mounted in a variety of angles and environments. The mount allows you to attach to poles in a variety of sizes and to adjust the position of the device. You can also use the same mount to attach to walls and other flat surfaces. Looking at the end of the unit, we have the four large antenna connectors that are used to mount the antennas. You have to be a little cautious when you screw these in as to not cross thread these. If you're using multi-mode fiber, on the other end we have an SFP connector and the RJ45 PoE connector. I did want to point out that the SFP port is actually labeled SFP+. Plus. However, it's only a 1 gig SFP connection. The unit comes with an SFP transceiver in the box, which is a 1 gig transceiver. As this is only Wi-Fi 6, Speed is not impacted, but I did want to point that out in the event that you were looking for a 10 gigabit. A quick update, I did reach out to Adelov to ask why it was labeled 2.5G as there currently are no 2.5G fiber transceivers that I'm aware of. They explain that there is support for 2.5G, but only when using certain RJ45 transceivers. I wasn't able to verify this information as the devices I had didn't actually work. But either way, this is a really odd combination that's not really necessary, so it doesn't really have a lot of impact. As Wi-Fi 6 can't really saturate a wired or fibered 1 gig connection, and the fact that you actually lose range by using an RJ45 transceiver, I can't see the value of doing it this way. It would just stick with either a dedicated 1 gig port or using the long range SFP fiber module if you're going to use fiber. I appreciate that they tried to clear this up, but in my opinion, it's still a bit confusing, but it doesn't detract from the usability of the device. The other two ports are empty and currently not used. Like other networking devices, to access the interface, you need the IP address, which you can find in your DHCP section of your router. Type in the IP address and you're taken to the login page. By default, the password is admin and all the wireless security is disabled. This may be convenient in some setups, but generally this isn't the best practice. You should really be prompted to change the default password right there during the first configuration, but rather the responsibility falls on you to make these changes later. If we look into the wireless section under general, you'll see the option to turn on or off the SOS function. 
This is a clever way to allow you to get back into the device as it only resets the SSID, which gives you a way to get back and log back into the device by setting the SSID to SOS427E and the password to 4 eighths. Looking at the wireless LAN settings, you have many options. As this supports multiple SSIDs, you'll see them all listed here if you have more than one. You have the option of editing the ones you created as well as to delete them. As I mentioned earlier, the default SSIDs on this device are left to insecure, so you'll either need to edit the one that's there or preferably delete it and create your own. If you want to add an SSID, you're prompted with this screen where you can select the bands. You can either create a 2.4 GHz only, 5 GHz only, or the dual band. Give it an SSID and then enable encryption and create your own password. You can change the default client max, and if you're using VLANs like I am, then you can add the VLAN ID here. You can optionally hide the SSID and you can enable isolation, which prevents clients on the same Wi-Fi network to not see each other. This is important on things such as guests or public networks. Hit save and apply and you're done with creating your SSID. Looking at the mesh tab, you can enable or disable mesh. I'm going to leave it disabled because I'm not interested in creating any mesh networks at this time. Clicking onto the system tab under general, you can set the device name, set the number of days for an auto reboot, enable or disable the LED, and most importantly, this is where you can actually change your default admin password. This is a little too buried for my taste, and as I mentioned earlier, this should be done as part of the initial setup. One of the first things I like to do is to actually go and make sure that I'm running the latest firmware. Going to the system tab under upgrade section, you can see this screen is pretty straightforward and it allows you to update your firmware. But unfortunately, there's no easy way to check to see if there's a new version to download, a feature that is available in most current devices today. This will force you to have to look for an updated file, download it yourself, and then update it through this screen. Under system in the configuration option, you have some nice tools where you can easily upload a previously saved configuration, download or save your current configuration, and do a factory default restore. Now that we've gotten a general overview of the configuration and options, let's run it through some benchmarks and see how it performs. Since my property is only about 13,000 square feet, I decided I'd test this a little differently and replicate a much larger area and a greater distance. Using only the 5 GHz channel, I wanted to test to see how far this would reach and still maintain a strong and usable signal. I used my MacBook Air M1 as my test device to run all of the testing. The first test on the left is the reference test, which I took directly standing in the driveway. And the second test is at the street corner, which is about 170 feet away. As you can see, there's some degradation. However, given the distance, it's performing very well and the Wi-Fi signal is still very usable even for video streaming. To push this device even further, I went to the other direction and retested two locations. The first was about the middle of the block, which is roughly 200 feet, and the second location is at the corner of the first street, which is about 400 feet. The 200 foot reading is still very strong and very usable, and I got to the corner of the first street which, was, uh, which I mentioned was about 400 feet, I could see a bit more degradation in the bandwidth, but the signal was still really usable. This device definitely has more reach than the typical AP, so if you're looking for an outdoor access point for your application, this would certainly do the job. Given that outdoor Wi-Fi is pretty tricky, you never know what you're really going to get depending on what's around you, but this Adelov outdoor access point performed very well. So what do I think of this device? In short, I actually like this access point despite a couple of minor issues. The first thing I like is that it's built like a tank. The device construction is surprising and given the price range of the device, it's extremely well built. Even the bracket is extremely heavy duty. I like the interface as it's well laid out and makes things pretty simple to set up. The things I didn't like was the default security settings. The default password and SSID should be more secure and not completely rely on the user to make changes. If you forget to change both, your device and your network will be wide open. The other minor issue that I thought was confusing was the labeling of the SFP port. This is a minor issue, but it can be confusing for some users depending on the hardware they're trying to use. I hope they clarify this in the documentation in the future. 
But despite these minor points, if you're looking for an outdoor access point, you'll be hard pressed to find a more robust device for this price range. The range and performance are good, and it should do well as an outdoor extension to your network. I would like to thank the team at Adelaw for sending me this device for review. And if you found this video useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.